Hi! Welcome back to my knitting video podcast, Knitted by Nails. I'm Catherine, aka Nails, and I'm coming to you from my office slash craft room at home in Berkshire in the UK. In this episode, I want to talk about my experience of doing a market for the first time. So how are you? Things here are disrupted, I guess. Uh, we think our neighbours are having soundproofing installed along the party wall, which is ironically a very noisy process. So I'm recording this episode of the podcast in the evening. I hope it doesn't have too much of a negative impact on my lighting. As far as I can see, sitting here, the biggest impact is that you can kind of see a lot of reflection in my glasses, but that might have been the case in the previous podcasts and I'm only just noticing it now, so... <laughs> uh, today I'm wearing my Marvin t-shirt, which if I stand up you can get a good look at. It says, no hope, this will all end in tears. So uh, if you don't know, Marvin is the paranoid android from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I've actually been avoiding wearing this t-shirt since we were locked down uh, in the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I thought it felt a bit too close to home, <laughs> but I'm fed up of just kind of going past it in my wardrobe, so I decided to wear it today. Uh, I love Hitchhiker's Guide, but this t-shirt has more meaning than that for me. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of Alan Rickman, who obviously gave this version of Marvin his voice. Uh, in 2019, Pip and I actually watched every Alan Rickman film, one per week, every week, for 44 weeks. Um, Pip got me this shirt shortly after we'd got to Hitchhiker's, shortly after we'd got to the, the Hitchhiker's Guy movie. Um, it's from the t-shirt website QWERTY. Uh, they do a ton of geeky designs, but those designs don't always stick around forever. So if you see a shirt you like, you have to grab it. Otherwise it, it might not come around again or, or kind of stay in their system. Uh, so right now they have a lot of really cool Halloween shirts that I'm doing my very best to resist buying. Uh, I'll include my refer a friend link to uh, QWERTY in the description below. That way if you sign up and buy a shirt, we'll both get a random shirt for free. You do have to, um, accept your random shirt in order for me to get a random shirt. Um, last time I got a random shirt it had sharks on it. It, it, was, it was pretty unobjectionable and it's a shirt that, that does rounds and, and I wear it all the time. So um, yeah, I can't imagine hating getting a free shirt from QWERTY. So uh, so yeah, do, um, do use that link if you fancy buying a t-shirt. I actually noticed that for about another hour you can get your hands on um, a new Star Trek design. So I, I only have to resist that for as long as I'm recording this podcast. <laughs> um, in this episode, what I really want to talk about though is markets. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago I did my very first market. Uh, it was Friday the 9th of October. Uh, it all, you know, the whole market story begins shortly after we moved house. Um, one day we had been to Ikea to get a few bits and on our way home we stopped in Thatcham Town Centre for Pip to post something at the post office and I noticed, ah, there's a market that takes place here <laughs> and it looked kind of vibrant, um, there were people about, uh, plenty of stalls and I was just thinking, you know, would this work for Woolly Rebellion? So I found more info on the Town Council website and decided that it might be worth considering a yarn stall to get a little bit of regular income for the Woolly Rebellion shop. Uh, I walked up to the market a few weeks ago and spoke to one of the stall holders that was selling crafts. Uh, while she said it wasn't like amazingly busy, she was selling a few bits and it was inexpensive to get a pitch. The organisers were friendly and helpful and it didn't take that long to get set up. So next thing I know I'm meeting the organisers from the town council um, and it seemed all I would need to get started was some public liability insurance, a table and a gazebo. So it turned out that Pip had a camping table left over from his days camping out on archaeological digs. Uh, that did the job perfectly. Um, it's perhaps not as big as if I was going to buy a table specifically for the market but I was like I don't want to spend a lot of money up front if I don't know if the market's going to make me money, so we were like, we'll go with the table that we've got. I picked up one of those 
plastic coated tablecloths from Dunelm with it had a little sheep pattern on it I was kind of looking for these tablecloths um, my gran always used to have I've got like vivid memories of, I think she still does have one of these like plastic like vinyl tablecloths um, in her living room because you know the cat used to like to sleep on the table and look out the window and so you know it was easy to wipe down and have dinner um, so I was thinking that would be just the thing for markets particularly in this time it'd be easy to you know wipe it and keep everything clean so I, I've been browsing eBay and all sorts of places looking for something appropriate. I was thinking, oh, I could get, you know, an autumnal one and then I could get a Christmassy one. And I was thinking, now you're spending loads of money on your market store. So then I started to look for something that looked like it had, you know, stitches on it or just something appropriate. And I go on to Dunelm and just type it, you know, tablecloth. And up comes one with these little sheep on, <laughs> which I was really really pleased with uh, I did click and collect which was super easy and um, it hides the camping table and gives my stall a nice woolly vibe so really chuffed with that it was something like 16 pounds so not too expensive um, there was there's also a local poppy knitting campaign on at the moment so Thatcham Town Council are asking residents to knit or crochet or make in some way poppies for an installation on Remembrance Day uh, so talking with them about my stall and they were like oh could we put up a poster about the poppy knit and I said oh yeah I'll get in you know red and black yarn and things for people to make poppies and then I thought I'll do a kit so uh, they sent me a copy of the pattern that they've been sending out to people which I, I printed a load out and teamed it up with I was you know using my ball winder back there to um you know wind up just enough yarn to make five poppies and um you know included some little buttons and pins and things so that people would have enough stuff to make at least five poppies either for the community project or for their friends and family i think that was a really good idea because that meant that the town council promoted it on their facebook and actually the vast majority of customers coming to the stall have been looking for poppy knitting supplies so I think that's been a really good way to get my stall knowledge of my stall out to local knitters because I think nobody was coming to the market expecting to see a knitting or a yarn stall um, but they had a reason to discover it with the poppy knitting and now they know it's there so fingers crossed I will still be getting customers um, even after um, the poppy um, you know poppy making season is, is over come the, the first couple of weeks of November so we'll have to see how things go after that uh, if we go back in time you can join me for a little tour of my store Our first market today in Thatcham on Thatcham Broadway. So here we are in our little gazebo. Um, when I say we, I mean me and Pip. We're here together. Um, he's very kindly taking the day to uh, be my runner, get me coffee and things. Um, and I thought I would do a little stall tour for you. Um, so first up we have our most popular product which is our poppy kits. Uh, Thatcham Town Council is doing a great poppy knit uh, I think there's going to be an installation with lots of poppies for Remembrance Sunday in November. They're asking people to knit poppies, so I put together a little kit so that it's got enough stuff in it to make five poppies. And that's been my most popular product today. Uh, then on the store we have knitting needles, crochet hooks, things like that. Um, then I've got some value, good value uh, acrylic yarns. And we move over to our bargain bins, which are mostly at the moment powered by my stash. I have no idea how much the traffic is affecting the sound on this video, <laughs> so I apologise if it's rubbish. Uh, so we have a £2 bargain bin and a £4 bargain bin. As I said, mostly powered by my stash at the moment, but in the long run that could be, you know, bits and bobs of stock that's left over. Uh, I have a Christmas blanket that my mum crocheted that we have here on the market to see if anyone wants. Might be a little bit early for that at the moment. And then we have our West Yorkshire Spinners sock yarns, which are probably my favourite. And it's so much fun to pair up the Christmassy colours or the 
country birds colorways with a contrasting solid color and we also have pattern books and free patterns and stuff to give away with those yeah so that's our little stall uh, there is a secret stash of stuff under the table that uh, the punters can't see but I know is there so uh, so yeah if you came along to the market and there was something you didn't see but you, think you might want definitely let me know because it might be hidden under the table or I can order it for you for next time so yeah we're gonna do this market as many Fridays as we can in the run-up to Christmas and see how it goes as you can see in that video, I've been wearing my hand knitted sweaters on the stall. Uh, I thought it would be on brand as well as a good way to keep warm outside in the autumn. I wore my Unity sweater, as you saw in that clip on the first week, and my Lover sweater, which you saw back in episode two for my second market on 16th of October. Uh, I was pretty comfortable both times. My only regret is not wearing wool socks for my second market. My feet did get kind of cold in regular socks. So for the first market, I wore my knitted socks. For the second market, all my knitted socks were then in the wash and I hadn't done a hand wash. So regular ones were on, not as good. So I need to knit myself some more socks clearly or I need to do my hand washing more often. <laughs> Okay, I think it must be time to look at my whips. So yeah, let's update you on that. Okay, so should I do a new one first or bring up speed on the painting brick sweater? Let's look at the painting bricks. Let's get that out of the way. I think the only update on this is that it now has one sleeve. Yeah, we now have one sleeve and one hole. <laughs> So you can kind of start to get a vibe for what it's going to look like once it's finished. I'm pretty happy with it. The progress has been slow though this week. I don't really know what, what it is that I haven't really been knitting. I think it's just getting over the fact that I know I need to pick up some stitches under the arm and that means I'm going to need to concentrate. So I just haven't been in that place to kind of sit down and, and think about what I'm knitting for, for a little while. So hey-ho. And the other thing I've been working on is some Christmas socks. So let's tell you about those. So I was I realised I had a UFO, another one that I'd forgotten to tell you about. I keep finding them. And this one was some Christmas socks. So I'd already broken into a ball of... West Yorkshire Spinners candy cane yarn. So that's this one. And I probably wouldn't have chosen to knit with candy cane had I not already started these socks because actually this colorway has sold out in the Woolly Rebellion shop. So I probably wouldn't have pinched a ball of it had I known. But I think I started knitting these back in like, I don't know, pre-lockdown, I think. Um, because I was thinking about knitting every one of my family some socks for Christmas still want to knit people socks for Christmas <laughs> but I'm kind of running out of time considering I'm only just going back to it now so uh, so yeah so I was part way through a sock which I've then finished so I've put in it looks like red uh, cuff heel and toe but really this is um, the <laughs> don't know what I'm going this is the um, West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply, uh, both of these, both the candy cane yarn and the yarn I've used for the cuffs. This is actually in the colour Cherry Drop, so it's slightly more pink than red, but I don't know, I don't know if it really glares, but that's really pink. But I had a ball of that on the go, rather than digging into a ball of red, which is called Cayenne Pepper. From West Yorkshire Spinners so rather than starting a new ball of that I thought I'll use what I've already got started and um, went with this which I think looks okay so I've got one sock and I've got another one cast on now and it's on its way uh, so yeah I've got about three and a bit stripes and a cuff so those those should trundle along quite easily um, I I'm not going to do the market this week on the 23rd of October because I have a haircut appointment. Got to keep this under control in case we're locked back down again. And um, But I was thinking socks would be a great project to have on the go on the market. 
because it's nice and small. I can have a project bag just like hanging off my arm and I can be knitting away and you know people can say oh what's that and you know, all that good stuff. So it's something to talk about and it gets something knitted, it gets a Christmas gift knitted. So I'm not quite sure who will get these but somebody will. Somebody with feet just a little bit bigger than mine. Uh, my project bag is super cute. So it's got guinea pigs and bumblebees on it and this is from Siobhan's Crafts. Uh, she makes a lot of these project bags, um, actually quite a few guinea pig fabrics. So, you know, the, the reason I chose this one was because Pip and I have a little joke about bumblebees, call them bumblebees. And if you want me to tell that story, let me know in the comments. But I'm not going to tell it here because it's mad. But if you do want to know the story, I will tell it on a future episode. So it's guinea pigs and bumblebees on a project bag so I had to have it naturally because um, you probably already know that I love guinea pigs because we are adopting some we have adopted some and in the next episode I'm going to introduce you to our new guinea pigs um, so yeah guinea pigs and bumblebees was a winner um, so yeah I bought this way before we moved house um, so guinea pigs were just a dream and bumblebees were just a joke at the time but yeah now I love it even more <laughs> so I guess oh no I'll save that save telling you the names of my piggies until uh, until the next episode although if you follow me on Instagram you probably already know the guinea pigs quite well because I keep um, I keep adding them to my Instagram stories it's pretty much the only thing I've been adding to my stories is cute little videos from our piggy cam which is inside their cage so yeah so candy cane socks for some lucky family member for Christmas is my other whip right now so I don't have any finished objects for you unless you count you know this single sock as a finished object I mean it is an object but it's only half a pair so it's, it's pretty useless you'd have to hop everywhere if um, if I stopped there so it's not really an FO hopefully it will be an FO next time right that is whips and FOs because I don't have any FOs. Um, new purchases. So I think the only thing that I've had arrive here at the house for me in the last couple of weeks is this, which is a planner. So you'll have to excuse the fact that I could not wait to, till now to open it. <laughs> so this is the Maker's Yearbook. And that is by Maker's Business Toolkit. Uh, so they were advertising on Instagram a lot last year and I looked at it and I thought oh this is really great and my my parents bought it for me for Christmas and um, and the planner has been so good this year like just keeping me on track um, I've got so into using it and now I just feel like I don't know what I would do if I didn't have it uh, I'll show you a bit about what it looks like I won't show you my existing planner because I've just spilled ginger Pepsi Max all over it <laughs> so uh so yeah this week just this week really is you know the pages are a bit kind of soft and squidgy um so yeah, that'll be a good memory the pages will be crispy and you know I feel like it, it's a living um it's a living book yes <laughs> were filled with memories and milestones uh, when it comes to my business so yeah uh, so obviously like Woolly Rebellion is the crafty makey business but the planner has been good for me kind of on both sides of my career so um, my day job is in recruitment I have a business called Sourcing Hat also has a YouTube channel which I've started adding some videos to um, and then there's the crafty side of the business so I've actually been using the yearbook to, to just kind of track my to-do lists for both and it, it yeah it's I it feels like a bit of a lifesaver really so let me show you what um, so the the layout for each week is the same next year so uh, so yeah you, you kind of get a week to view I don't know if that's the right expression but you get a week and each day has like three little things that you can write which are like your three top things that you want to do uh, what I tend to do is kind of add boxes underneath and write other things that I want to do but it's very good at keeping my to-do list contained like I can't do more things than I can fit in that little box in a day so I 
you know, it has to go on to another day or I have to erase, you know, rub one out. <laughs> I was going to have to rub one out. <laughs> Did I just say that? <laughs> so I have to, you know, remove one and move it to a different day if, um, if I've got too many things that I want to add to my to-do list on a given day. Um, but yeah, it's it's been brilliant. So I ordered the one for 2021, which arrived and it's very pretty. And I love the fact that it's spiral bound, so it lays flat on my desk. It's pretty much just the surface of my desk here in front of my computer. I have my keyboard set way back, my planner in front of me, so I can kind of always see what I'm doing. It really helps focus me. It's like when I'm just sat there staring into space and thinking, what, what was I supposed to be doing? look back at the planner it's really been saving my life so yeah i treated myself to the 2021 yearbook which i don't know if it is but it looks a little thicker than the 2021 so i'm really excited to kind of get stuck in to the stuff in the beginning so there's all sorts in the beginning about kind of planning your year and setting goals and things which you don't necessarily have to do but you know it's nice to look at some of it didn't really feel relevant for me um last year but it was still really interesting to look at and um, the bits that were relevant I did, the bits that weren't I didn't. Uh, you also get some kind of note pages at the end, you get a kind of, you get a whole month thing so that you can see what's going on in the month at a glance. You can also set, um, you can also kind of set priorities for the month that gives you like a 10 priorities. So that's really good for helping, you know, focus me. At the end of the month, I kind of go back or periodically during the month, I'll go back to the first page and work down that list of 10. Like, am I actually progressing these things? Has this translated to what I'm writing in for each day? Or, you know, have I just gone off on complete tangents? Are these things still relevant or do I need to move it to next month? Uh, yeah, I love it, essentially. So that's the Maker's Yearbook. And... Uh, yeah, so if you make stuff and it's, you know, your business, um, I would recommend. Right, what else? I don't think there's anything new in the Woolly Rebellion shop. I have been prototyping some little, like, cotton, knitted cotton face cloths and dish cloths. But I haven't quite got those to a point where they're ready to photograph yet. So they're not going up in the shop yet. Um... But as soon as they are photographed and ready to go up in the shop, I will show them to you. So hopefully that will be in the next episode. Um, okay, so that's new stuff. How have I been entertaining myself? I think that's next. <laughs> so uh, Netflixing section of the show. So that's knitting and Netflix smushed together. So what I watch isn't always on Netflix, although this month, this month, this week, this time. Yeah, I kind of do this fortnightly-ish don't I? Yeah. <laughs> this time it is a rather Netflixy update so um, yeah what have we had? So last week we got the first episode of Star Trek Discovery season three landed and yeah had been really looking forward to that and it didn't disappoint. Um, there's a cat in it called Grudge and Grudge has his own Instagram which I discovered yesterday and started following um yeah so it, it was a fun episode and I'm sure that you know Trekkies everywhere are very happy that Discovery is back on our screens and it's really fascinating to know that you know they've done a lot of the post-production from home and even the music score which has always been a really huge deal for Star Trek has been recorded by musicians in their homes they were all sent microphones and told to record their pieces and then it was all put together later which is just mind-boggling um i'm so impressed <laughs> so yeah um star trek discovery is back um then over the weekend uh pip and i kind of set that aside for watching the haunting of bly manor which is from the people who did haunting of hill house was that only, was that last year? That must have only been last year, I think. So I knew they were doing another one, but really hadn't realised that it was ready for this year. I thought, well, you know, with the pandemic and everything, you know, we'll be waiting for that, right? But then there it is on Netflix. I hadn't even been looking out for it. And then there it is. So we put aside the weekend and we binged that in like a couple of days. Uh, it's one of those things where it's really designed to be binged, I think. Um, we didn't think it was quite as good as Hill House. I won't 
to give any spoilers, but it was still very good. I thought the character stories were better than The Hill House, but we agreed it perhaps wasn't as good as a horror um, because but a lot of it was exposition and kind of explaining the mechanics of what was happening and letting us meet different characters from different time periods and things so um yeah it was a good mechanic but perhaps they hadn't nailed down explaining it to us in a way that you know kept the kept it scary right up to the end <laughs> um yeah so well i was really impressed i think it's very worth watching definitely but perhaps not quite as good as Haunting of Hill House. Uh, if you haven't watched either, then, you know, it's it's spooky time. Yeah, it's the perfect time to go check that out. Um, if you don't like things that are scary, if you don't like, you know, things that make you jump, uh, then, you know, avoid it, basically. <laughs> uh, the other thing that we've been watching, um, we really like documentaries. And, um, yeah, anything kind of puzzly we quite like and that often ends up being you know crime related which you know, we talked about and we were like it's a bit of a shame that you know you're always watching things about murder but what are you gonna do you know <laughs> a lot of mysteries are murder mysteries um so uh we'd watched the first season of a u.s program called unsolved mysteries on netflix I think that was towards the beginning of lockdown we found that and watched it and then this week I don't know if it was new this week but we discovered that there was a second season on Netflix now so we caught up and watched those they were very they were very interesting um I think we spread that across for like three evenings or something we watched those um quite snackable tech tv you know you just keep watching another one um you just want another mystery it's it's one of those things I found Haunting of Bly Manor and Unsolved Mysteries, one of those things that you keep wanting to talk to each other about halfway through, <laughs> like, you know, theories and, and all that stuff. So, you know, I like that kind of TV where you have to keep pausing it and um, discussing it. <laughs> well, that wraps up Netflixing. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to mention this time was uh, about uh, Andrew and Andrea at Fruity Knitting. So if you troll YouTube for the knitting podcasts. I'm sure you have discovered uh, fruity knitting by now. If you haven't, then this section is basically me telling you to go check it out because uh, it's a fantastic podcast. Um, I'm going to have to look up how many episodes there are because um, I'm sure there are loads. There's definitely over 100. Um, and I would yeah urge you to go check it out because it's a very informative podcast it's given me so much confidence in my knitting just seeing the way that andrea adapts patterns um it's just incredible and you know the, the things that they make uh, andrew's journey as a knitter in episode one um you know he talks about learn you know learning to knit i think he's tried to make a hat in episode one and then goes on to make some socks for Andrea and then he makes a jacket for himself and it's such an interesting journey watching someone learn to knit and develop as a knitter right in front of your eyes and be like guided by someone who's experienced so kind of if you're a beginner knitter you can learn a lot from Andrew's journey and if you're an experienced knitter you've got Andrea so it's really um it's really something for, for kind of all knitters and super informative they do interviews with people in every episode um their patreon is really worth it um i've been a uh, i've been a patron uh, through their patreon for quite some time now and you get discounts and things most of the people that they interview on the show offer discounts if they're a pattern designer or you know a yarn supplier or something so um you know all that is is really great there's also a patreon community for those of us who who kind of support them uh that's a, you know a really nice place to hang out as well they do cows you know all that kind of good stuff um and the reason that i'm bringing this up and encouraging you to go and take a look and consider supporting them is because this week they had some very sad news um andrew isn't well and they don't really know how that's going to shake out so it's disrupting their programming um 
there probably won't be quite as many episodes as usual and um, I just want to encourage people to remain supportive if they can. Um, I'm definitely going to remain a patron for as long as I can afford to do so and um, you know definitely go over still going to watch their content um, you know I started at episode one and I haven't really caught up yet <laughs> so I still have plenty to kind of keep me going so if there are episodes that you didn't watch at the time go back and check those out and um, and yeah definitely keep supporting Andrea and Andrea if you can um, doesn't have to be financially it could just be by watching their videos because it all contributes to um, to their income they are full-time knitting podcasters so uh, so yeah their their online presence is their only income so um, if you can support in any way it doesn't have to be directly financially then um, then I would urge you to do so um, okay I'm gonna wrap up for this week and uh, yeah I just want to say um, take care out there wear your mask um, <laughs> wash your hands all that good stuff um, take care of each other and um, I'll see you next time happy knitting take care bye bye